Yesterday was Father's Day, 2014. I woke up before everyone else in my room. Rolling out of bed, I padded down the stairs and brewed a cup of much-needed coffee. Pouring my face over the steaming cup, I looked out my window to the inspiring landscape of endless white-capped mountains. This year marks the ninth Father's Day that I have spent without my dad. But the mountains and my purpose this week make me feel as though he were standing right there with me, sharing our cup of morning coffee, just as we used to. We started coming out here and um, brought out educators, brought out patient safety leaders, brought out organization leaders. And then we realized that there was the 800 pound gorilla in our room whenever we talked about this. And that was really the culture, but more importantly, it was open, honest, and really professional communication. The barriers that the kids have, the students have, with the patient safety model is they go back and they want to speak up and they're intimidated by their attending physicians or by their professors. Okay, so you're saying if you, if you admit that you made an error, your colleagues aren't going to want to work with you mm -hmm. because they'll think you're incompetent? I think that's the fear. While in their yeah. head they say, there but for the grace of God go I, right? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. I'm glad it wasn't me. But, yes. you know. One of our residents said that in her seven years of undergraduate and graduate medical ed education, she'd only had three hours of training in patient safety. She had more exposure to patient safety improvement techniques, philosophy, and approaches in one morning here at Telluride than she has had in the last seven years of her training. You can be open and honest with patients, and you can then learn from these events, and you can come to a more appropriate resolution much quicker, much faster, and a much more financially efficient way to do it. Uh, healthcare and the way we were trained uh, in the current mode is over 100 years old, the newer methods have to take into account the different lifestyles, uh, the different uh, technologies, the social media. So we really want to get young people here to tell us how this is going to impact on them and how they're going to impact uh, on the health system itself because they're going to bring new ideas, wonderful ideas. After taking the gondola ride into Telluride, the students and faculty plunged into our work of expanding our knowledge in the field of patient safety. We watched a documentary outlining the tragic case of Lewis Blackman, a 15-year-old boy who died due to a medication error, miscommunication, and assumptions made by his medical team. The film explored the errors in Lewis's care that have become far too common in our medical system. What resonated with me the most were the feelings described by Lewis's mother. She defined her experience as one of isolation and desperation. We were like an island, she said. There was no one there to listen to her concerns. Ironically, Lewis died as a result of being in the hospital, the one place where he could not get the medical care that he so desperately needed. After an egregious error occurred during my father's medical care, a physician did not give us an apology, but a white rose by a nurse. The inclusion of the patient and the patient's family as a key member of every team is also paramount. And by the way, we're gonna be held accountable for that increasingly financially over the years. When you have experience as a family member being in the hospital with somebody, it changes the way you look at things. And so now as a healthcare provider, I think it's really important to understand what families are doing so and what families are going through. So I think the immersive experience of Telluride enables students to have a change in how they feel about the care that they're providing and that is probably the strongest um, long-lasting element for them. The mix of people that Telluride's pulled together is really critical. This is a safe place where everybody who has a stake in the training of doctors and medicine in general can come without being threatened, without feeling antagonistic toward another segment. 
that's pretty rare. It creates a different environment. It creates a more relaxed space to be able to have difficult conversations and be yourself, bring your emotions to what we're talking about, and lean in and try and figure this all out. An interesting discussion arose after the film. Our faculty emphasized the need for physicians to partner with families of patients. This will create not only a team during the course of treatment, but will cultivate compassion, empathy, and trust in case of a terrible event. It was terribly confused because nothing made sense to us, and yet we've got all of these healthcare providers saying the same thing. So of course, we feel intimidated and think that they must know, when in fact they were just sort of following each other. They, these weren't independent judgments that we were getting. It was one judgment through a lot of different voices. I've heard these stories, but to hear them over and over again and to realize that, um, that you're all seeing the same things. And it makes you realize uh, how pervasive the problem is and how important it is for us to do something about it. So we've had a, a fair amount of self-examination about, you know, what's going on and why has it been so slow when the problem is obviously so bad. I think there's a statistic that said that even when a new procedure, new research comes out proving that there's a better way to do something in medicine, it still takes over five years for that to be implemented. And it's kind of flabbergasting because our consumer base and our product is one of the most important products that you can imagine, which is the health of our population. It's very important that we have a good system of handling adverse events when they occur, but it's most important that we maximize the potential um, for reducing patient injury and adverse outcomes. Yeah, you know, creating this culture of safety is something that we talk about all of the time, and yet it's very difficult to instill. You don't just sort of say, okay, new culture today, everybody, we're going to start fresh. So yeah, it does come from the leadership all of the way down. In a traditional medical school or a nursing school, um, you know, there's just no room in the curriculum. So what students find when they come here is a whole different language, a whole different way of being, a whole different way of thinking about their career. The death of my father has given me the fuel to pursue medicine and patient safety as my career. It has instilled in me passion, energy, and determination. Yet the one thing I have not found in the nine years since my father's death is forgiveness. The remedies come in all different ways, as you know, Richard and I have seen through the years. Sometimes it's just the open and honest communication, answering their questions and apologizing and letting them know how bad we feel and then what are you going to do to improve the problem and show them that you literally are changing the systems to make them better. I, I will tell you, Every patient or family member that I've had the experience of working with, that's the common denominator question. Although I do not hold any one doctor or nurse responsible for the detrimental outcome in my father's care, I have not been able to forgive the team for what happened. I have not been able to go back to that hospital. As I sat on my beautiful bed in the mountains, I realized that I also harbored another feeling, fear. Fear of becoming a physician who does not practice mindfulness, who does not partner with my patients, and who does not apologize for my mistakes. So patient safety is important to me because it was really shocking when I figured out um, how bad our system is right now and uh, how much improvement we can make even with small changes. Um, with big changes, we could do a whole lot more, but um, when I figured out that there was so much that we could do, uh, it really kind of wrapped me in. I hope to be able to bring back um, a lot of the things that I've learned, some of the ideas for um, activities to try to help educate my peers, uh, the, both my fellow students and, and students coming behind me. Um, you know, if there's one thing I would leave this program, definitely it needs to expand. I think that what the folks with the Telluride Scholarship are doing should be part of every healthcare curriculum in the United States. What's going on here in Telluride, I think, is the answer, or, or part of the answer, to the future. And I think I've said before, these young people are the, are the future. 
and they're the ones that are going to make a difference. From a personal experience, Telluride has become almost a second home to me. I think about the first year we came out here and, and meeting the community and, and laying the groundwork down. Truthfully, I didn't know if we'd go past one year. You know, it was really just a concept and a vision that we were trying, and yet it really was embraced by those first leaders who came out here and said, we need to continue this work, it's very important. So over the 10 years, this has become a second home to me. I really look forward to coming out here and doing this work with the faculty and with the students and residents. Uh, it, it consumes a lot of our times. Everybody's very busy. We sometimes wish we had a little more time just to sit back and enjoy the beauty of Telluride, the mountains, the trees, the snow up on the top of the hills. It's a magnificent place that leaves you empowered when you leave here. I put away my computer and got into bed. Lying awake, I took in the gravity of the day. I'm so grateful to be here at Telluride among students and faculty who share my passion in patient safety. I truly could not have imagined a more perfect way to spend Father's Day.